Hello and welcome to Poppin' Fig. In this episode, I'm going to go over why giants are slow. Now we've seen in the movies and other mediums how like giant characters, not like Hulk size, but even larger, commonly move slower in their walks and the way they move their arms, etc. Now why is that? Well, that is what I'm going to go over in this video. Now don't worry, there will not be scientific terms for two reasons. A, that is not necessary, and I'll use mathematical terms, and B, I wouldn't know what on earth to say in the first place. So with that, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I came up with this little formula known as the size to gravity ratio. Now I'm really only using size as height and gravity as 30 feet since that is around its maximum pull speed. So if you want to change it a little bit, like change size to mass and stuff like that, feel free as long as you give me some credit at least for coming up with this formula. Okay, so the size to gravity ratio, how would I use this? So I am approximately six foot, I'm around there. So if I were to jump, let's say my feet get three feet from the ground and then it would land, how long did that take? So if we put that in, gravity pulls at around 30 feet per second and I jumped three feet. Now I apologize for those of you that use metric, but let me move on. So that would be around 0.1 seconds at a minimum that I would, my feet would be in the air before landing on the ground. Now what would happen if I increase my size by 10? Let's say I was 60 feet tall and I jumped 30. Now some of you might be thinking, oh, you would land at still 0.1 second because gravity pulls everything at the same rate. Like if you were to drop a rock and a hammer, it, they would fall at the same time. It's just that paper and feathers are exceptions because they glide on air and stuff like that. No, that is not the case because gravity pulls things at the same rate. If I were to increase my size by 10, the rate of gravity doesn't change. So if I were to plug that in, the original was three to 30, but now this new one is 30 to 30. So it would take a, at least one second for me to land. That is the major component on why giants, for example, are far slower in appearance because gravity um, is less effective on them as it is to us. So the higher the number you are on this size to gravity ratio, the less gravity affects you. The smaller the number, especially in the fractions, the more gravity affects you. Some of you might be thinking, okay, so therefore giants are always slower, so therefore the smaller you are, the more compact you are, the faster you really are, right? In a way, yes. Now, if I were to move like this, like this, like I'm moving my arm about two feet, that seems like okay, but if I were to be ground more, it would probably look like this though from a distance. So am I moving faster or not? Am I faster or not than my, than my smaller self? Well, it depends on how you're looking at it. From that point of view, yes, you are slower the larger you are. However, that doesn't mean the distance you cover is less. So there are some insects, I sorry, I didn't search them up though, for examples. But there are some insects that are pretty fast but not setting any record for our us larger organisms. However, scientists have said that if some of these insects were larger, like maybe to our size or maybe not as large, they would they could actually surpass the speed of cheetahs. Now that's pretty fast after all cheetahs are like one of the fastest and if not these fastest organisms like around their size. So let me just say like there is like a two inch by one inch um, insect. I don't know if there is one that's pretty fast, but let's say it can move five times its length. So this is pretty much a five L equals X. I'll just say X being the distance it covers L being the length. So let's say for insect that's two inches long and it can move five times its length within one second, which means it covers 10 inches. I'm sorry for those of you that use the metric system. So it moves 10 inches per second. Now that's kind of fast. Now what would happen if it grew 12 times the size to where that way it goes from two inches long to be two feet long because of. So now if we plug that in to the five L equals X, that puts us at 10 feet a second. Now, I don't know how fast cheetahs go, but that's still pretty fast though. So, does getting larger really change anything? Does it make you slower? Now, from moving your joints, I would say so from outward appearances by like your own perspective, unless you gradually went up to that size, it wouldn't seem as bad then. But that doesn't mean your distance coverage is far less. So, let's, let me take like toddlers to adults, for example. Now, when I say toddlers, I don't mean like the babies that are still crawling and learning to walk. I'm talking about like maybe first, second graders in elementary school, prim primary school that can still walk. Like they would walk, like if they were to walk, walk alongside an adult, an adult has a far greater stride because they're larger, not just because of further development. But 
it's because of how large you are. Because as we get older, we get larger and we have longer strides. We can, like our distance between one foot being placed into another increases. So the larger you are, the more distance coverage you can get. However, the larger you are, the less your joints may seem. I mean, for us humans, we slowly progress, you know, like from like an infant to an adult, we slowly progress and we don't really notice anything. However, if you were to do drastic changes, especially in drastic distances of height, like going from around six foot to 60 feet, that is pretty drastic and there would be noticeable changes. So here, let me kind of sum it all up. So the size to gravity ratio shows how much gravity pulls and affects you. But just because you're larger doesn't mean you're slower. It may appear you're slower, but you're actually getting far more distance coverage done. Okay guys, that is all I have in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned that the larger you are, the less gravity affects you, but you still move farther in distance. Distance doesn't decrease the larger you get. So I hope you learned more about that. I hope I change a new perspective. And hey, hopefully you can apply the size to gravity ratio to multiple concepts, including math. And yeah, that's all I have. And with that, sign off.